What's going on everybody and welcome back to the channel. Now today we are back here with our Cricket World Cup 2023 final preview. India v Australia, Narendra Modi Stadium, Jay Shah will be there. I hear Duba Lipa may also be there. Sachin Tendulkar will probably be there. Ricky Ponting will be there. And most importantly, 130,000 fans that will no doubt be packed out in blue and only supporting India. I do understand that but we are here to run through our World Cup preview today all of the big things the weather every previous result in our ICC knockout matches I've got all of them up here we're going to dice not dissect we're just going to touch over previous results between these two countries in knockout matches so this is going to be fun I'm going to enjoy this one and we've also got our weather report and predictions that I will be giving at the end of the video so stay tuned till the end I will give my most runs most wickets Winner prediction um, and just, just a little bit of extra stuff there. So, hey, if you're new, subscribe, leave a like, and comment down below all of your predictions, who will win the final, who will go big, and who will let you down. Let's get straight into it. So, everyone knows the date, Sunday, 19th of November. It's going to be 7.30 p.m. start time here. Of course, nothing changes there. So where should we start? Let's do the weather first because I feel like that's quite relevant. Um, Narendra Modi Stadium... I don't remember the last time it even rained on this venue, but as you guys may be able to see, Sunday morning, Sunday afternoon, evening and overnight, do you know how much rain there's going to be? A whole lot of fucking nothing. So no rain, forget the rain. We are not going to be in England or Sydney for this game. So there should be no rain around unless something just magically happens and, and that's what happens. And then they end up saying, okay, the reserve day, it's been washed out and now we have to give the trophy to India. I, w I could see that happening, but th <laughs> thankfully there is no rain. It's going to be a, th a nice little 32 degrees. Like that is perfect for it. A little bit of wind, a little bit of humidity, no rain, piss all cloud coverage. So it's going to be a beautiful bloody day for cricket here. And let's begin. Let's begin with the previous results between these two countries. The th so the first one, we're going in the order of dates. We're not going back to 1983 because with all due respect, it's just irrelevant um, because that's a long time ago. Or, I mean, we could have actually, no, it was, I think it was 87, not 83. I think, yeah, it was, or was it 83? I can't remember. Doesn't matter. We're starting here. 1998. At the third quarter final in the Wills International Cup, which I believe was called, you know, was the old name of the Champions Trophy. So, the third quarter final in Dhaka, India v Australia, India won by 44 runs in a knockout match of, you can tell, it was 50 overs back then, player of the match. <laughs> We're not surprised. Sachin Tendulkar, 141 off 128 rocks and took four for 38 with his bowling. If that is not one of the great all-round performances in any game of cricket ever, I don't know what is. So that is incredible. We're not surprised. We're just going to briefly touch on this. Um, nothing. We're not going to dig into it. So don't expect any of that. So you can see Rahul Dravid, 48. Ajay Jadeja, 71. Okay. So, and then obviously Tendulkar up the top there into the bowling. Um, damn, okay. I can't even say his name properly, but I know who that is. He took three wickets. And then into the Aussies, Mark War made 74. Um, and that looks really about it. Ricky Ponting made 41. And India just looked like they bowled too well. Srinanth, Agaika, Kumble, Sunil Joshi, Robin Singh, and the man, the greatest spinner of them all, Sachin Tendulkar. Four <laughs> for 38. So... That is how that one starts out. 1998, India beat Australia in a knockout match. Arguably one of the great, like, Indian teams ever, but arguably the greatest Australian team ever. So that's a great start there. And now into this one. The first quarterfinal in Nairobi. It was in a gym. By the looks of it, it says gym. I don't know what the boundaries were. They might have been about two metres. ICC knockout game, 50 over match. So, play of the match. No, hold on. India, let's say, they won by 20 runs here. I'm sure a lot of people probably remember this. Yuvraj Singh, 84 off 80 for the player of the match. He will feature in another one of these scorecards in just a moment. But no surprise, Yuvraj Singh does the thing again and wins it off his own bat. India batted first. Ganguly, okay, so not a whole lot until you got to Yuvraj Singh at five. Makes 84. 
There's not a whole lot of other runs around him, is there? Like Ajit made three, Zahir Khan was amongst it, Dravid, um, Sachin only made 38. So you've probably done well here to restrict India. The bowlers, Brett Lee, too far, Galepsi, too far, Shane Lee, too far, and Steve Waugh bowled four overs for one wicket, which is crazy to me. Australia were there into bat, and no one made over 50. Ricky Ponting, top scorer with 46, and Michael Bevan, 42. So not a whole lot going on there, is there, for the batting. The bowling, Zahir Khan, Agaikar, too far, Prasad, too far, and Sachin and Robin Singh also with their own wickets there. So as you can tell here, India is 2-0 in these previous results in ICC knockout 50 over matches. Finally, and this one, I'm sorry to all the Indian fans watching, you might want to look away or skip this part because you still may feel a bit of trauma around this one result. The final in Johannesburg, of course, I, I know this. Um, of course, I didn't, I didn't, I don't remember watching it live because I was only, what, one years old at the time. But I have obviously seen the highlights a million times and everything that happened from I mean, this entire World Cup, it was one of the best, a lot of people say. Australia won by 125 runs, made 359, only two wickets down. Player of the match was Ricky Ponting with 140 not out of 120. And player of the series was Sachin Tendulkar with 673 runs and two poles. Into the scorecards, Ricky Ponting and Damian Martin, of course, of course, it had to be Ricky and Damian Martin there. 88 not out of 84. Um, and even Gillian and Matty Hayden doing a little bit of work early. So you like to see that. And have a look at who was coming into bat. Darren Lehman, Bevan, Roy Simons. Like so much batting still to come. The bowlers though for India, only the man Harbhajan Singh took two wickets. You even had Varinda Suag bowl three overs, which is crazy. <laughs> um, and Yuvraj bowled two as well. So a big score. They didn't chase it down. Um, Sachem gone for four. Suag with 82. And Rahul Dravid with 47. Top scored there. So the bowlers, Ua, Glenn McGrath, the pigeon, three far. Brett Lee, too far, excuse my burp just then. Brad Hogg, one far. Andy Bitchell, one. And Roy Simons, two for seven off two. So, out of the three first games that we've we've spoken about, India is up 2-1 in ICC knockout matches. <laughs> Into our next knockout game, which India did win, of course, Yuvraj Singh, the man decided to do something insane. Um, 70 off 30. Uh, player of the match, obviously, won the game really with his incredible batting. I mean, you make 70 off 30, you finish off the innings there that was too much for the Aussies to get. In Durban, 2007, of course, different format, 20 overs, but it's all white ball cricket. It's all pressure, ICC knockout. 188 India set. Um, let's get into it. How did this one go? Gambier. So who made the big runs? You. So they were in trouble. Like, let's be honest here. India's not making more than... 150 60 ish here, unless it is for that man Yuvraj Singh with a 70 off 30 deliveries. That is crazy. You've even got MS Dhoni, who 36 off 18. That's very helpful. Um, Rohit Sharma comes into the picture with an 8 off 5, and Ifran Patan also out there. So you almost think, is that enough? I don't remember the exact conditions of the pitch, but you get done by Yuvraj Singh just doing absolute masterful things with the bat. Brett Lee, so who took the wickets? Mitchell Johnson, my man, MJ, two for 31. And my father, Michael Clark, one for 13 off one. So that's inspirational there from my dad. Into the Aussies batting, other than Matty Hayden and Andrew Simons, the two biggest hitters of the team. It didn't seem to go all that well. So as you can see there, Matty Hayden, 62, and Roy Simons, 43. They've also got Brad Hodge amongst it, who was one of the most unlucky Australians ever. He should have played more than like 50 games for his country, but unfortunately was a part of such an incredible team. Um, that is an incredibly deep batting order, like all the way to Brad Haddon. Even Mitchell Johnson could hold the stick, but they were done too well. Damn, look at the wickets amongst it. Patan, Sharma, Harbhajan Singh. So you've got all the usual likely suspects. And India win that by 15 runs. So they're up 3-1 to one in these ICC knockout matches so far. So, and there we go. So now we bounce back. The, semi, the second semi-final in a 50-over World Cup. Of course, this was the year that Sydney did win at Sydney. <laughs> Australia did win the World Cup this year, 2015. One of my favourite... 
moments in cricketing history this entire World Cup. Let's get into it, of course. Australia set 328. Thank you to the man of Stephen Smudgy Boy Smitherson. 105 off 93, one of the biggest knocks of his career um, and just sensational stuff there. So you set a pretty big target. You end up bowling India out pretty comfortably in the end. Finchy, 81. Smudger, 105. And Glenn Maxwell batting at four. 23, Shane Watson, Michael Clark, Faulkner, Haddon, and Johnson. So, I mean, look, fuck, you set anything over 300 on your home deck, it's going to be tough to chase. The bowlers, Umesh Yadav, what? I don't even remember him playing. Four for 72. Moet Sharma, two for uh, Coley, none for one, uh, none for seven off one. So even Coley rolled the arm over. Muhammad Sham God, none for 68. Jadu, none for 50. And Ravi Ashwin, one for 42. So that is a very interesting bowling attack. And I'm going to be honest, I can understand why India did not win the World Cup in 2015 because that bowling attack is... Uh, it's not really to be desired, is it? Like, you know, Shami wasn't even at his prime back then. Yadav was pretty good, obviously. Moet Sharma, mid. Virat Kohli, bowling one over is an ideal. <laughs> Jadu, and then Ashwin. So it's not exactly the strengthiest bowling attack India's ever had. And then they're batting. Hitman, Shikha, did okay. Kohli gone for one. Rahane, 44. Dhoni, 65. Late. And, of course, that run out um, of him and Jadu were crucial. <laughs> Um, and yeah, that's pretty much it. So the bowlers though, James Faulkner took three far, Johnson two and Mitchell Stark two far as well. And into the last one that we will touch on. So India did win the last, I think this was the last ICC knockout match that these two countries have played. If it's not, correct me if I'm wrong, um, but I think this is the last one that these two teams have played in a knockout match. 2016, well, I'm trying to think now. I think this is the last knockout. Some, please correct me if I'm wrong here. It was in T20s, of course, 2016 in Barbados. No? Was this not in the West Indies? Mahali. <laughs> I swore this was in um was in the Windies. No? Okay, so that just shows how much I remembered from this. Let's get into it, though. Australia, Uzi Kawaja um, and Finchie Boy there at the top. Yeah, just piss poor. I mean, no one really went big, did they? Having a look at the scores, like, even the man Peter Neville was playing... That is not great. 10 off 2, though. Um, the bowlers, P Pandya took 2. Yuvraj took 1. Ashwin took 1. Bumrah and Ashish Neera took 1 each. And then they chased it down there. Hitman, Shikadawan. Good lord. Other than Virat Kohli, they did not do much here, did they? So, <laughs> thank God for Kohli here at the end. And even a bit of MS Dhoni late to finish this off. Because Hitman, Shikha, Suresh... Yuvraj didn't do much with the bat in hand. They still had Hardik, Jadu, Ashwin, and Ashish Neera to come out to bat, who were all quality. So they were probably going to get the job done. But shout out to Coley for that one. 82 off 51, four, nine fours, sorry, and two sixes. That's one of his better knocks in a knockout game. Into the bowlers, Cook Tenaya, what the fuck? One for 33. <laughs> uh, Shane Watson, two for Faulkner, one for. So... That is how that finishes out. That is all of the, the most impactful ICC knockout matches that these two countries have played. India do win the leverage, I think, 4-2 four, four in the end. So if you're an Indian fan, you probably, you know, does this give you a bit of extra confidence? Of course, different teams, but a different... Um, you know, 11s, different situations, different years. Of course, it's all different circumstances, but just gives you a little bit. You know, everyone always assumes that Australia is the king of knockout matches, but we have a look at those. India's had our measure more times than not. So there you go. It's going to be in India's home deck in front of all of their home fans. It's their destiny at the moment. Let's get into it. My predictions to finish off this video Let's do it. Oh, no, my big prediction is at the bottom. No, <laughs> I didn't want to reveal that yet. Fuck. Okay, I might do a little edit or I'll just let you read it, but just focus up here on my eyes. The winner will be whoever bats first. I think we know anything from that, that surface. Um, we've watched plenty of IPL, plenty of ODIs on that deck. If you bat first, you make big runs. It's really difficult to chase anything down, although we have seen teams chase on that deck and, and do it, but... I would rather just get out there, bat, 
make big runs and, and try and put the other team under pressure when they have to chase. And if you're India, who would you pro rather be? You'd probably rather get out there and bat first as well. But I wouldn't, if I was India, I wouldn't mind chasing either because I don't know. I just, you get that feeling that they're going to be in it no matter what. All right, let's get into it. So my predictions for the wickets, I've got Mohamed Siraj either taking three wickets or more. And I've got for the Aussies, Hazelwood taking three wickets or more. I think they will be the two big danger men either side. I'm not expecting that spin plays a massive role unless it's getting caught out on the boundary or LBW. I just don't see too many chances of getting bold or having a slip in. It's just, I don't see it. But anything can happen if the deck gets changed or something, I don't know. But those are my two big danger bowlers for that. Um, my runs, I've got Schutman Tendulkar, making 60 plus. He knows the conditions better than anyone. He plays there all the time. He knows that deck as well as anyone in the world. So I'm expecting big things from the young gun. And I've got Mitchell Marsh making 50 plus. Now, I do not have confidence in that pick, but he is either hit or miss, just like Glenn Maxwell. So I'm expecting either Marsh or Maxwell will make 50 plus because both of them did nothing in the last game. So it only makes sense that they then do something in the next one. That is usually how their careers happen. And into my wild card prediction, which is just like a random thing I just made up, if you will. Jay Shah lines up batting at first drop for India. So they're going to push Kohli down to four, Ayer at five. And I don't know who gets pushed out of the 11, probably Surya, but... Jay Shah, he's written the script. I've seen it. He's got himself in there at number at number three. So I don't know how Indian fans are going to react to that. But Jay Shah will be batting at first drop for Team India and might get the first change of bowling too. So keep an eye out for that one. My, the rumor is though, they're going to keep him on the bench when fielding. So that's a bit disappointing. But that is my wild card prediction. Jay Shah bats out at three. My big prediction though, this is, I've just made up random shit here. I don't know what's happening, but big prediction. Rinku Singh hands the trophy to the winner, whether it's Australia, whether it's Team India. Rinku Singh will come out of nowhere. They'll have like a bunch of fireworks and, and, and flames and stuff. And then they'll have the massive entrance. They'll make the stadium go really quiet. And they'll say, here comes Rinku Singh with the trophy. And then he hands it to the team. And it's just a beautiful moment regardless. So that that's, that's my hope. But into real talk now, I'm about to give you who I think will win the World Cup. And there it is. So India by a small margin. Now I've been saying this pretty much the whole time, the whole World Cup, I think India were going to win. Everyone said that we know, but before the semi-finals did start, I did start to think, I think Australia is going to make the final here and play India. And I think that would be India's worst case scenario would be playing us. In saying that, I, I, I just don't think it's going to matter. Unless India completely crumble under the pressure, There's, I just don't see a way they lose this game in a close one, in a big win. I just don't see them not fulfilling this destiny. Cricket is a funny fucking sport. We know anything can happen and has, but they should get this done. They should win, and it should be an Indian 2023 World Cup trophy, which I know everyone else is probably expecting or hoping, but... That is how that is going to cap off. That is my World Cup 2023 final preview predictions. All of that good stuff. Comment down below. All of your thoughts down below. Who will win this one? Who will take the most wickets? Who will make the most runs? And will Jay Shah bat at three? And will Rinku Singh bring the trophy to the winning team? That's all to be guessed now. We're waiting. We're just what? what what's today? Friday? So Saturday is tomorrow. And then we're on Sunday. And we're going to find out who's the champions of the motherfucking world. So, hey, if you guys are new around here, hit that subscribe button, leave a like, and I'll see everyone in the next one.